السلام علیکم سعیدی السلام علیکم سعیدی سعیدی واٹس دا ریالٹی آف سولر ایکلپس اینڈ لونر ایکلپس نو آئیڈیا that there's a, always a reality for the solar and the lunar, the lights of the sun and the lights of the moon and uh, the tajallis that are coming upon the earth and a warning. So alhamdulillah. As alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, is there any way to stop feeling the need of two-way communication with the shaykh, will meditating, trying to connect with shaykh spiritually cure loneliness? Two-way communication? The connection is for your spiritual benefit, it's not a communication to chat. So if you use the connection for dunya it becomes lost, the disconnect and the person is now connecting with themselves on a nafsani. The connection is only for spirituality, that they connect, receive the lights, receive the guidance, receive the knowledges, send the fires and keep feeling the energy. It's not a lonely person communication program because then it becomes all dunya and that become delusional through the mind. This is only for spirituality and to connect to higher realities. <clears throat> Same with the connection to all the shaykhs and above, that you don't connect to those realities and talk about dunya with them. It's not a connection that actually is then dropped and the person begin actually to connect with their own nafs in whatever image they want it to be. And then they're talking to their nafs and, and sort of hallucinating with their nafs. So to keep that out then it, the adab of making the connection is for haqqaiqs and realities and tajallis and, and emanations inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Some, Sayyidi sometimes you had mentioned that sh shuyukh as being qadri and other times as qothri. Are these two different realities or the same people manifesting as per the journey of 12 months? Qadri, qothri? The shaykhs being Qadri or Kawthari. No, from what people may understand that there are shaykhs that are hidden and their job is their zikr and their ibadah and if you were to talk to them they would be very harsh. Their job is not to be the attracting of people. They have their internal worshipness and their ibadah, their worshipness in which Allah has asked of them. Then there are shaykhs that are and their mission is to represent the face. So they are on a mission to talk, to teach, to bring people towards that reality. So they're all taking from the kawthar, means these are the fountains of illumination from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad so it's more that who are Jalali wa Jamali. So the tariqah shaykhs that speak they are at times Jamal which the beatific emanations and the lights and the grace and people feel that. At the same time their talks can be very Jalali, very heavy, very tough, very sort of fiery and that's to take away the bad characteristics. Not for the brain of people to be, to be you know upset with the shaykh but the shaykh's Jalali talk or energy is like a fire coming out that people can't see. When that fire comes out it begin to burn all imperfections. So anytime the shaykh is faced with uh, uh, characteristics of imperfection then this fiery tajalli comes out. So that to burn it, to take it away so that Allah doesn't have to punish the servant at a later time for keeping it and preserving it. Better to expel it in dunya 
than to take your bad characteristics into the grave to be accounted by Allah So that's what we said also that only I'll describe the verses in Holy Qur'an that deal with punishment. Every time you read them Allah takes away a punishment from the grave. So just by reading the verses of punishment and fear and, and what Allah will do to those whom disobeyed, just the recitation and reading of them Allah take away the difficulties of the grave by means of that. So there's always a hikmah and a wisdom and it's not what people think through their mind inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there a difference between seeing visions with open eyes versus closed eyes? Seeing vision? Seeing visions with open eyes versus closed eyes. Is there a difference? Yeah, the, the training <coughs> is then in the closing of eyes because it's not the faculty of the physical eye. So with the closed eye training they're visualizing and seeing through their soul. And the soul has the speed in which to move beyond the speed of thought. And that it trains on how to open up that reality and to see with their soul into these oceans of reality and to connect with their soul from the ocean of that reality. Later they can train on how to see with their eyes open where they basically have them open but they disconnect from the sight of their eye. They lock on to something and zone off of their vision, again using their spiritual vision. But it's definitely not something that you want to open your physical vision so that all the veils of your physical will set you with no ease. And that usually happens by excessive drug use and alcohol. Right? When they call delirious tremors people who are alcoholics and crack addicts and drug addicts, why? Because they have burned a veil that separates them as a rahmah from what they shouldn't be seeing. That was a mercy from Allah So you don't train yourself to burn that veil away otherwise all day long you're going to see horrific things, horrific things and as soon as you look at them they look at you, they're coming after you. So there's a, there's a mercy in not seeing and pretending not to see them and not paying attention to them. It's for if you pay attention that's all they wanted. Now they begin to haunt the person, come after the person, talk and, and, and continuously all, all over them. So that's not a world in which you want to open. So the physical eyes is of no value to open the physical eyes other, other than difficulty and torment. But if the heart wants to be with Prophet then through the soul and all the connection through the soul and to see ourselves at Raza Sharif, inside Raza Sharif in the presence of Prophet seated at his holy feet, that's through the soul, Allah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How can we purify our sight? or unsee something evil we have seen in a movie or it could be violent or some horror? Yeah, in the shower. Then when you enter into the shower just pretend or visualize like you're in a waterfall and that your, 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 yourself is covered so that it's not of an indecent nature and it's actually sunnah to, to bathe with clothing and the hawa to be covered but many people are not doing that. But in the sense of being in the showers to meditate, that the water coming down is a clean fresh water like a waterfall and that you see yourself sama and whirling and that your soul comes out and begin to whirl and the reality of water that you cast your burden upon the water, let the water take the burden away. So whatever your physicality is seeing you don't want it to adhere to the spirituality of the soul so then you visualize that it coming out and whirling and washing these visions away, washing what the eyes have seen away and to cleanse and to purify it. And as a result you cast that. So the shaykhs always should have water around 
So they put their burdens from students into the water. Their system of cleansing is that they visualize and they cleanse and they see all these difficulties that been put upon them and they enter into the water with their soul and begin to wash those difficulties off of them. And that the higher realities and the angels and the shaykhs above will take these burdens and these difficulties away. So it's a continuous formatting of our hard drive. <clears throat> That's why in the meditation book you have to get the timeless reality, two copies, one for you and one for a friend because <laughs> that was all in timeless reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is Laylatul Qadr also related to timelessness some ways? Yeah, that's all we've been describing. <laughs> that's two days we've been describing <laughs> oceans of power and lights and what did you think? It, it's not something physical. Laylatul Qadr is you become timeless, you become Layl and Allah gives you Qadr. So it's only about that. <clears throat> you have to buy three books of timeless reality. <laughs> One for yourself and now two for your friends. <laughs> Raj has to buy three books also because he bought it and didn't read it. <laughs> Most of our people they, they probably just buy it, put it on the bookshelf and say, MashaAllah look at the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Can resonance frequencies be used for mass destruction? If yes, how to be protected? <laughs> yeah, it's but one shout. Surah Al Yaseen Allah describes it's but one shout and we destroyed you all. <laughs> so, yeah, mass destruction. Ya Allah can give one takbir. Everything is gone, everything is collapsed and crushed and then but one shout and we raised you all. So definitely everything is based on sound. So now already they're destroying everybody. Listen to the radio station. You think those words from those high priests of Dajjal is not destroying the hearts, the minds and the souls of people? And look at what they do upon themselves and what they mark upon themselves because of those frequencies. So it's already begun that this world around us is collapsing. Now by the time they want to actually come out and take your elemental form and shake it with sound, definitely they have the videos of how they do that. That every, every, every structure or glass or object is uh, appearing with a frequency, means the atoms and atomic structure of it is vibrating at a frequency. So just for us to understand it goes like this, woo, woo, woo. They figure that frequency and play its reverse so that their frequency goes boo, boo, boo. What happens? It goes in between the frequencies that are resonating and collapses it so that it can't keep its structure on the zikr Allah gave to it. They come and break that resonance and then it make it to shatter. So shaitan already breaking people's resonance by the sound in which they, they vibrate, <clears throat> the sound in which they emanate. And the only thing that can help them against that, dhikrullah, dhikrullahi akbar. That's why people whom they think that their prayers help them, their physical actions help them and they don't come for zikr. But why Allah who knows and made this whole creation and put the whole game together, dhikrullahi akbar. Why? Because only Allah's dhikr and these salawats and praisings which is all the dhikr of Allah can reset and hold any form. No matter what shaitan does to it, if Allah's resetting that form with the dhikr and all these praisings and salawats and nasheeds then shaitan holds nothing to it, Wal Jal Haq, say to them that when the truth comes falsehood perishes, not the truth, falsehood perishes. So whomever is existing by falsehood Allah already warned to them, you're going to perish, Zahul Khan, 
and that your falseness is, is nothing to even hold together, there's no glue on it. So it's all by its nature crumbling. But one whom establishes himself with the dhikr of Allah is from the haqq of Allah As a result of that haqq no falsehood can destroy it nor manipulate it nor retry to form it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Sayyidi can you please explain what's the significance of the number 786? It's in the study of the abjad is that every letter has a, a number value to it. It's a numeric coding which is an angelic reality. So when they code Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and they say the ba is worth two, the seed is worth 60. So we have the abjad table on our website nurmuhammad.com and you go to the secret of letters and numbers and there's like a periodic table but for the Arabic huruf in a specific order and then the value of that huruf and its numeric code. Then everything they read they can put that code to get the numeric value. So Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem they add it through that periodic table, that uh, table of uh, abjad and they come with the number 786. So instead of writing Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem they write the number 786 and that's the coding for Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem which Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem then is the opening for all of Holy Qur'an. So through numeric code they can begin to write all these different realities. 786 equals 21. So they can write 21 and there's a secret in the number of 21 and 21 times as if you did it on the number of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and then 2 plus 1 is 3. So then there's a secret of why we recite and why Prophet wanted us to recite things in three, that repeat things in three because then from that coding there's a secret and address upon it inshaAllah. Subhanahu wa bika rabbal izzata ma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, thank everyone for, for participating tonight and for the whole month of Ramadan and, and uh, celebrating Ramadan with us from uh, online from all over the world and, and mashaAllah for their generosity, support through the, the charity websites, the Nur Muhammad website, the SMC merch website, the Facebook shares, all the foods and thousands of pounds of food that have been distributed, hundred uh, uh, and hundred and more wells that have been made during Ramadan inshaAllah give everyone more and more, take every difficulty away and that uh, make the organization to be even stronger so that by next Ramadan even more can be accomplished inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.